are you hungry? And if so, you're in the right place because today we're making Itameshi Carpaccio, Japanese Italian. Give me something, something good. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Girl Girls. Like I just said, we're cooking Itameshi. Itameshi is the Japanese word that they use when they cook Italian food. And it's a combination of the two words, Ita and Meshi. Ita short for Japanese for Italian, and Meshi short for or the word for meal. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a classic carpaccio with some Japanese twists to it. Basically in form of these two things, but I'll get to them in a little bit. Before we have a look at the board, as always, if you're not a subscriber to the channel yet, please do me the favor, hit that subscribe button and check the bell icon to get notifications every Tuesday when a new episode is online. And if you enjoy this episode, have a look at the ones I've done in the past. I have about 300 recipes available on YouTube. But now, let's have a look at the board. As with every carpaccio, we have a piece of beef fillet. We also have some parmesan, a really nice, or it's packed with umami. We have a wasabi dressing. We have an onion sukumono, basically sweet pickled onions in rice vinegar. And we just have some spring onions to garnish with. But let's first have a look at how we made the onion sukumono. For our onion sukumono, we need obviously onions. And then we have 100 grams of water. We have 50 grams of rice vinegar, 30 grams of sugar, 10 grams of salt, and about three grams of katsubushi. And the first thing we need to do is to put the liquids together with the, what would you call them, granular things on the stove. So we put the water, the vinegar, the sugar, and the salt in a pot on the stove, heat it up. At the same time, we peel and slice the onion, but I'll show you how we slice them. But I'll, I'll peel them before, so I'll see you in a bit. We peeled our onions, and we'll get this going. I will just put this on the stove. And that needs to come to a boil. Now for the onions, you can either divide them in half and then slice them. But I prefer to have like the full onion rings for this dish, because I think it looks nicer. So just slice them a couple of millimeters thick. So I'll see you again once that has boiled and once we're done slicing. So it's boiled, and as you can see, all the sugar and salt has been resolved. Now put in the katsubushi, and we're going to let this stand for 30 minutes. I'll see in 30 minutes. The half of the half over. The half hour is over. Let's strain our liquid. It's a wonderful way of sweet pickling. It reminds me about these. Um, small onions that you can pickle you know, that I grow up eating. Um, you had them with quite a lot of things in Sweden. So we cleaned up our pot, put the onions in, and put the liquid back. And now we're just going to bring this to a boil again. And once it's at a boil, we'll take it off. I'll see in a minute or so. So we come to a boil. Now the last thing you need to do is to just let it cool down. You can make much more because they keep nicely in the fridge, four or five weeks at least. Um, and the other thing that I prepared in advance is the wasabi dressing. Let's have a look at how we did that. Not very many ingredients for our wasabi dressing. We need a bit of lemon juice. We need some wasabi paste, rice vinegar, soy sauce, um, sesame oil, and a bit of sugar. Now, if you don't want to make this yourself, there's a solution. You can buy wasabi dressing, but I think it's a bit too sweet. I prefer to make my own, but this is just to show you. If you don't feel like doing it, you can always buy it. I'm gonna make it straight in a bottle um, because then you can shake it. Put all our sugar in. And it's basically equal quantities of rice vinegar. And soy. I 
I'm not making very much. As well as the sesame oil. A squeeze of lemon juice. It's, the lemon juice is just there to get a bit of a fruitier kind of flavor to it. Uh, obviously you have sour sourness from the or acidity from the vinegar. And then wasabi paste to taste this one. It's not a very strong one. That's why I need quite a lot. Put on the lid. Now to mix it, we just shake it. And then as always, we need to taste it just to make sure that we got everything right. It's good, but it could be a bit more wasabi in there. So let's give it another squeeze. Another shake. Last try. Perfect. So it's really easy to make your own, and I think it's better because it's not as sweet. It's your wasabi dressing. So again, up to you. Make it yourself, like we did, or buy it available in most kind of Asian or even yeah, Japanese supermarkets. Uh, here in Zurich I found it in I found it in two or three different places. So you shouldn't have difficulty finding wasabi dressing. But keep in mind it is a lot sweeter than uh, homemade. So homemade is always nicer. But now let's start with the rest of the prep. There's not much left to do. We need to cut the parmesan. And we need to cut and well, cut and abuse the fillet a bit. We're going to flatten it. So let's start with the parmesan. I think it's easiest just to hand cut the parmesan. You want it quite thin. It doesn't really matter if it breaks, because I'm going to break it up in smaller pieces anyway. So this is kind of what we're looking for. And I will just break them in half, and we put them in a separate bowl. So do that. You need. You don't need too much, but it should cover it quite nicely. So I'll see you in a bit when we're done with this, and uh, we're going to continue with the beef. So the first thing we need to do is to slice it. I would say about three millimeters. And slice up your whole beef. I, I normally count 150 grams per person. So uh, this is 300 grams, just cooking for two today. So I'll see you once we've uh, sliced up our beef. So we, we sliced our beef. Now get two sheets of cling film, or one sheet and fold over. I'll actually get one sheet and fold it over. I'll just show you how we do one. I have one of these smash burger smashers. They're not that heavy, but it works. And it's going to be loud, so I will turn off the sound now. And this is what we're looking for. A nice, perfectly thin slice of beef. Now, you might have noticed in some I would say lesser Italian restaurants, they freeze the meat and then they put it on a slicer, but it's so much tastier this way. This, you know, if you freeze it, there's water in it and it's just not as nice as hand beating it. And you get even a much better result. Now, if you don't have one of these or a proper meat, what we call it, meat flattener, meat beater, you could use the bottom of a, of a 
of a cooking pot or something like that. Something that's a little bit heavy and flat. And the easiest way is just to cling film like that, beat, and you're done. So I will beat the rest, and then we're ready to basically plate this up. As you can see, we already put our meat on the plate. Um, now, before we serve this up, if you stuck with me this far, there must have been something you enjoyed about this episode. So do me the huge favor and hit that thumbs up button. It's just down there. It takes you a second, but it's so valuable for me. Thank you. Now, let's plate it up. Let's take some of our sukumono. Just spread it out. And now you see why I wanted the rings. I think, well, visually, it looks a little bit nicer. And don't be shy, it gives a really nice taste. I'll take that away. And now for our dressing. Shake it quickly before. And be quite generous with the dressing. And now for our parmesan. There we go. And last but not least, our spring onions. And there we are, our carpaccio itameshi style. Like always, when you try to do 100 things at the same time, you forget something. I forgot to turn on the cameras. So you can see a half-eaten plate. It's not very appetizing, but I'll remind you of what it looked like when it was nice. Um, but now, <laughs> let's taste this for the second time. But now, you have joined me. So obviously, it's, it's uh, itameshi food, so we're going to eat it with sticks. It's so good. It's sweet, it's sour, it's salty, it's sharp. Because I wouldn't call I wouldn't call wasabi spicy, it's sharp, you know, it's this nose feeling you get. Um, similar to horseradish. And I mean this on paper I think the fusion, Italian, Japanese shouldn't really work. But it really does. I mean, Italian cuisine is kind of known for their simplicity, right? Not many ingredients, but very good ingredients. And the Japanese cuisine are more clean tastes and proficient in execution, you could say. But it really, really works. You have the sweetness of the sweet pickled onion. The umami and saltiness of the parmesan and this sharpness of the wasabi. Mm. A great dish. Now, if you saw the previ previous Gurgut on Tour episode when I was in Vienna at Cucina Itameshi, this dish is from there. So I stole the dish from there to share with you. I really enjoyed it. I hope you, hope you will cook it. It's not difficult, as you can see. Just give it a try. If, if you like Japanese and Italian cuisine, and if you like carpaccio, then this is the dish for you. You will love it. Now, if you have any questions about the dish, leave them in the comments below. I always answer them. Um, and if you're not a subscriber yet, which I know, unfortunately, a lot of you aren't, hit that subscribe button and check the bell icon so you don't miss any of the future episodes. But that's it for today. All that's left for me is to say goodbye. Thank you.